To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 24, Jacob vs. Jacob. Rome wasn't built in a day and the Bible wasn't written in one sitting. It's made up of layers upon layers of authors from different places, times and perspectives. In this episode, we have an opportunity to look directly at those layers. There's the first Jacob story, which tells us how he conned his older twin brother, Esav, Esau, out of his inheritance. Two chapters later, there's another Jacob con, a sting operation with his mom to dupe his dad and steal Esau's blessing. The texts look to be ages apart in terms of language and storytelling development. And then there are the translations that were made 2,000 years later that take their liberties with the holy text. So what was the author's agenda and the translator's agenda? How has storytelling evolved? Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. And this week we want to give a shout out to Janet Johnson. Thank for, you, Janet. For becoming a member of the show. Thank yeah, you for yeah. supporting our project. So first things first. The first story looks to be very old. It's 91 words long. 91 words long. That's it. The English version, 350. It's a Let's tweet, see. basically. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a couple of tweets. And the second story is more than six times longer. Yeah. It's 617 words, double that to get to English. So this is like we see basically with the old Hebrew, the, the, the newer Hebrew, and the translations, like three layers of storytelling development and language development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first story, like generally, it's like something that you know, or like a tale. It's not even a tale. It's like, yeah, it is known that yeah. Jacob, when he saw Esau coming from, back from hunting, and he, was, yeah. he tricked him. And the second story is really yes. like a story. It yes. is written as a story. The first one is like a comment in a, some news item in the news. Yes. The second story is like an Indian soap opera. It's supposed to be dramatic. Yes. The human emotions that are being expressed there are wow. highly dramatic wow. and they are supposed to be that way. So the audience will understand. And the second story... It reads to me when you continue later as if it was injected into the story because it stops like mid uh, drama and then picks up on the drama in, in a very different way. Yeah. And for me, maybe this is a hot take, but the second story, especially both stories, but especially the second story seemed to me a hit job, yeah. a hit job on Jacob. Yeah. Because he is being portrayed very, very negatively. I will say even that the first one is not a hit job. If we think about it as like something that is known and is like a tale that is like a common sense or common history, Jacob is not that evil there. Maybe if you th stop and think about what he did, is evil. But it's like a tale of one talent, mm. the superiority of one talent over the other one. Oh, nice. Aesop is the strongest, he's the hunter, but he's very, very stupid. He say Adom Adom twice, he's very red, tired. Red. Okay. And even at the end, he says that he, he buzz via voz okay. la chora. He Yeah, in the English translation, they use, it, they use the word despise. Despise. I think this is very a very harsh translation. Yeah, yeah voz, it's like a... It didn't, it dismisses see, it. Dismisses yeah, it, exactly. It, it, it doesn't think it's that important. It doesn't despise it. But for the, the people who hear that he's, he was, he, he was. It's like booze. It's like, it's like booze. Not only in Hebrew, like boo, yeah. boo. Ah, yeah. It comes from that. Yeah. <laughs> so when the audience uh, hear that Esav was, he doesn't think that the inheritance is that important. <gasps> he thinks that he's stupid. He's right. stupid. So Jacob's brain power in the first story overcomes a okay. physical power it's because it's so condensed and, and it's not really a story it's like a, a rumor or a tale like a, a few sentences it doesn't have the author's agenda it's not mm. it doesn't have like a real no, that's true. moral judgment it's like yes. that how it went <laughs> yeah that's yeah. how it went and Esau there pro is being portrayed like a, a stupid guy okay. you know? let's go into the story so after they were born, they grow up. 
Esau was a man who knew how to hunt and he was a mm. man of the field. Man of the field. Field man. Field man. And Yaakov was a, a naive person, simple person. He's not a simple person no. who dwells in tents. Yeah. Okay, but in English, the King James translation. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning ha- hunter. He wasn't. Why is he not <laughs> cunning at all? First of all, if you read the stories, He's definitely not cunning. Yeah. <laughs> if there's one the opposite thing that is not of opposite cunning. of cunning, and this is like, why are you adding a word yeah. that wasn't there yeah. in the original text? In later translations, more content, more like modern translation, now is like a skillful mm. hunter. Yeah. Because it's like a man knows hunting. That's yeah. Ish Yodea Zeit. And Isaac loved Esau, Esav, because Tzaid Befiv, mm-hmm. because he, he hunts talks, well. he hunts well, and maybe he talks about hunting, maybe mm-hmm. that's it, because it's like hunting in his mouth, Tzaid Befiv. Yeah, maybe it's like Isaac loved Esau more, because Esau was hunting and feeding Isaac. Yeah, and it's very, like in Hebrew, it's super, it's like Tzaid Befiv, two words, yeah, Tzaid in his mouth, like hunt in mouth yeah. but one <laughs> the image that it's great in my mind is like yeah yeah, yeah i like Esau while he's chewing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, Esau, yeah. okay and then if he stew the stew in the king james translation it's a uh, pottage and then there's uh, the silliest part of the whole thing so we have different ways to understand it, but basically, and Esau told uh, Jacob, fill me up, like yeah. let me gobble, yeah. gobble me, gobble me, <laughs> gobble me, please, me nah. gobble, <laughs> me gobble, please, from this red red, yeah, because I'm tired, and then if there's an explanation, this is why. Uh, his name is Edom. Edom. So basically, we're going to go into detail about that, basically, because uh, es- Esav is redhead and he's supposed to be yeah. the ancestor of Edom. But there's a place called Edom. <laughs> but for me, when I'm uh, reading it, like, uh, yeah, there's a place called Edom. But for me, when I'm reading it, it's like as if he's tired. This is why he called the stew this red, red thing. Uh, because it's, too, it's very silly. Uh, gobble me let me eat whatever please from this red red yeah this is like who talks that, uh, that way ah he's tired he's tired this is why he's, he's famished said, this is why he said adom adom like speaking uh, you know yeah. incoherently maybe it's like they imagine very weird a child that you are chewing your steak in front of the child and he's like red red <laughs> Maybe it's like a childish mm. act. That's what I'm saying. It's like right. it's repeating. Yes. You want something, so you say it twice. Yes. And then Jacob said, sell me now your inheritance. It's Bechor. translated as birthright. Okay, I guess. It's birthright. It's definitely birthright because b'choratcha, the inher- it basically means the inheritance. Because but why b'chor- do they call it the birthright and not the inheritance? In the Hebrew context, b'chora, it means that you are the first born. So the first born has a birthright. Okay. You, okay. It's like the, the most proper way to say it is sell me your first born in nitty. Firstbornness. Firstbornness. Yeah. And it's interesting. So the first story is about the Bhoa. Mihra Kayom et Bhoatra. You have a, a, a play here. But so the first one, uh, the birthright is. Uh, b'chora. Mm-hmm. The second story is about the blessing, which is bracha. Mm-hmm. Bchora, bracha, bchora, mm-hmm. bracha. So they have to be like the second one is definitely a play on yeah. this one. So it doesn't miss the beat. Doesn't miss the beat. Sell me now your birthright. And Isaiah said, "I am going to die." <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm, look, this is just silly. I am going to die. Why do I need a birthright? And Jacob said, "Okay, swear me. Swear to me now." And he swears. And Jacob gave Esau uh, uh, bread and the stew of lentils, nezid adashim. Mm-hmm. So first of all, here, something. The first one, there's a stew. Mm-hmm. And it's pottage, whatever. And I looked it up. Like in ancient times, when you have uh, meat in the stew or the pottage, it's like uh, it's more rare. Mm-hmm. And it's like more rich and it's better. Yeah. So for, at first, we don't know <laughs> what's in the stew. But when he gives him, it doesn't give him a meat stew. Give yeah. him a lentil stew, yeah. just like the, the shitty stew. We still use it as a phrase to describe something very cheap, like a, a bad deal. Yeah, you sold for nothing. Yeah, you sold for nothing. You got nothing. You got a lentil stew. Yeah, you got a lentil <laughs> stew. Even though I personally love lentil stew, also I'm vegan, so I wouldn't eat the meat stew or the fish stew, so go lentil stew. 
I think it's a, uh, again, uh, it reinforces my claim. That is like, <laughs> the first story is a pro-Jacob story and more precisely pro-brain power, pro-intelligence. That's true. Esau, he has a physical problem. His needs are very basic and animalistic. Yes, and he thinks short term. Thinks short term, exactly. He doesn't use his intelligence. He thinks only on this moment, thinks basically like an animal. So that's so very racist <laughs> towards the Edomites. <laughs> <laughs> and Jacob is like, yeah, yeah, he's tired. I can get anything out of him. I can get my birthright. Not only does he have a chance to get the birthright, he also can get it for lentils too. Yeah. For a good price. He's not that smart. He doesn't have what scientists, brain scientists, now call like the frontal cortex, which is the, the, the place in our brain that's supposed to regulate. It's like when you have like a strong emotion to act in a certain way, the place in our brain that tells us don't is in the frontal cortex. Mm. And it's also... Coincidentally, the most evolved place in the, are the human brain. It's like the, you can find the, the differences between us and chimpanzees are found in the frontal co- cortex. So, it, in it, so you have like a, they don't say frontal cortex. That's something maybe that if I was an Hindu, I would say the third eye is like the frontal cortex. They don't think about it like that, but they, there. they recognize yeah. the differences between physical power and brain power with brain power you can overcome people with physical power so here is like a pro brain power tale and also if you contrast them to your point Esau is emotional it's very emotional yeah. we're gonna see it in the second story as well yeah. Jacob is very calculated very calculated this is also their deity Elohim yeah. Israelite deity he's mm-hmm. the patriarch of the Israelite Israelites he, like uh, Elohim is very distant and calculated first I'll do this then mm-hmm. I'll do this and Yahweh is more emotional yeah so and that's different that's a, that's a difference between Jacob and Abraham yeah. so just like a little pet uh, peeve of mine in the, these stories so Esau ate and drank Vayochal <laughs> Vayisht here we go yeah, Omri knows this part I told him about it Vayisht uh, it's drank today we would say Vayishte so mm-hmm. it's like more condensed and mm-hmm. uh, languages we know that ancient like their ancient form is more condensed specific, more guttural more guttural more specific, consonant more, more consonants and specifically uh, the abjad languages uh, you can see that in the text that it, 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 it like the words become longer mm-hmm. as time goes on so i'm reading i'm reading it by ish and i'm like by ish what is it by ish 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 <laughs> I'm like saying it's like the, the or, like the origin, <laughs> yeah, the origin of the word, the Hebrew word, lishtot, ishte. Mm-hmm. It's isht and isht. It's close to mm-hmm. <laughs> like the sound you make when you're drinking. So yeah. maybe it's like onomatopoeic, onomatopoeic. And also, so <laughs> after we discussed it, Omri, so uh, you mentioned that maybe there's a different uh, onomatopoeic sound in uh, other languages, and I looked it up. And in Indo-European, uh, in Proto-Indo-European, the word for drinking is po, po, po. So it's like po, po, yeah. po, 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 po. like, like drinking the, from the, the difference between drinking from a river or our water source and drinking from a water flask. Yeah, container. From a river, it's like you take your hand, so it's like. <laughs> then when you want to explain that to a child, how you say that, it becomes. <laughs> Because you want to, to contain the sound, you want to mm. mark the sound. Boom. And in pu pu, I got pu pu pu. That was uh, the Indo Europeans uh, near the lakes, the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. So they had lakes. They had lakes, but they were step people, maybe. Uh huh. Moving around. Moving around. So they needed a container. So then the pu sound is like. Yeah. Boom. Boom. And then there's also uh, a yes. Tired, ayef, ayef, <sighs> tired. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.